All right, here we are. Back with you guys once again for another episode of That Rocks. It's Eddie Trunk here with Don Jameson, Jim Florentine, and we are talking rock and metal with you live on YouTube every week, most weeks, Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, like this week. And it is good to have everybody tuned in around the world, watching live or, of course, watching anytime you want, archived on YouTube. We got about, uh, I think this is what, episode number nine? Is this nine? Eight. I believe this is eight. It's eight? Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe telling it's number eight. We've got eight great episodes to uh, for you guys to check out, all the past great guests. And today we've got a tremendous guest, one of my favorite people always to talk to in the world of music because he's just such a good guy and such a regular dude. And you could talk to him about anything. The great Michael Anthony, an original member of Van Halen, joins us today on That Rocks. If we had an applause track, we should be hearing it right now. Uh, Donnie Boy, how are you today? What's going on, man? All good, man. I, I, I think we have a little uh, we have a little glitch in our opening theme. I don't know if anyone's been catching that, but there's a there's a little glitch in there where the music kind of slows down. So get our production team on that. But yeah, other than that, good. Had a great weekend opening for Metal Church two nights up in uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts at the vault. So thank you to Metal Church and the venue for having me up there. Um, the shows were packed and uh, the new lineup is absolutely tremendous uh you know mark lopes now singing as close to david wayne as i think you could get so uh and people were really happy so it was a good weekend so john and matt from shadows fall uh with their band living wreckage opened one of the shows and i like that uh, band yeah shadows fall and them they were living the wreckage. Band singer too the new, the new band's killer i played them they're real good yeah. So, and then of course we know uh, Shadows Fall is going to make some new music. So, yeah, good weekend up in uh, Massachusetts. I've been to that venue. It's an old bank. Yeah. And uh, and it's cool. I did a speaking show there. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Jim, what's going on with you, man? Not much, man. I'm I'm excited. Michael's going to be on the show. He was great when he was on uh, that metal show back in the day when him and Sammy were on together. He loves busting balls. He's got a good sense of humor. So I'm really excited about uh, talking to him. And make sure you guys in the chat, we're doing our metal six pack and we got the club membership afterwards, the after show. So get involved. We want to hear from you guys too. So yeah, he's going to join us a little earlier. We're going to have him on at uh, about the bottom of the hour. So we're going to spend a little extra time with him because yeah, we can talk to him and he like any, like he's just the coolest guy. I remember on the old show, I think, one of you guys wasn't with me because you couldn't do it, but who was with me when we did the thing at Irving Plaza when when Chad from the Chili Peppers jumped over the balcony? Dom was with me. And yeah. and if you saw that episode of, of that metal show back when we did it, I, I, again, th this is what kind of guy Michael Anthony is, the sense of humor he has and how you, you, know, he's, you can say anything. That was just when Wolfgang got announced as the bass player in Van Halen. And I had all of Chicken Foot lined up, and I said to said to uh, Joe Satriani, I said, "Do you have any kids?" And Joe said, "Yeah." And what do we say now? We go, "Do any of them play bass?" Yeah. Or do they play guitar? Right. And I said something. He goes, "Well, yeah. Why?" And he goes, "Well, how long before he replaces you in Chicken Foot or something?" And then Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers, who of course is in Chicken Foot, completely jumped over the railing and and jumped like fifteen feet down to the floor. Just, you know, have those guys out of their mind. But Michael just laughed it off and we had a great time. That's those are the best kind of people to talk to. They really are. Yeah. And I saw I saw Chad back at Irving Plaza maybe a year later at an Amana Marth show, believe it or not. And uh, and he's kind of looking at me and I'm looking at him and I see he's kind of recognized me, but can't figure it out. And so I, in the break, I sort of said, uh, I go, oh, hey, Chad, you know, you know, Don Jameson, you did that metal show with us and all that. I said, he goes, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. He goes, I think the last time I saw you, I, j I jumped over this railing right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, for my daily radio show, I've just come off an insane run where I had in the last 10 days, Tony Iommi for an hour, Geezer Butler today for a half an hour, yesterday, Brian May of Queen, just like, you know, look, I know I've been doing this forever, but that's kind of like pinch yourself. Even though I know these guys, it's just insane to me to have like the architects, the gods on with me. So the last few days have been insane. If you have Sirius XM, listen on the app. There's some great stuff in there. And, um, you know, Geezer was great today. You heard it, Don? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And um, yeah, some just some some great funny stuff and hearing about 
you know, I, I know it's been out there in the news um, before, but about, you know, hearing that Iron Man, he wrote it about Jesus, which is so funny after 50 years later, we're, we're just kind of finding this out. So, you know, Iron Man to us all these years has been whatever it's been, but that those were the original lyrics were meant to be Jesus. Yeah, well, you know, Giza was, you know, grew up strict Catholic, too. Yeah. So he yeah. was going to church and all that stuff. So that's where he was really coming from. He wasn't. And then they just decided to turn, you know, evil just for the, the kind of like the gimmick back in the day to get everyone's attention. So yeah. he said that on the show, he said it was so funny that everybody just thought that we were like these satanic guys. He goes, I couldn't have grown up in a more Catholic environment. And uh he said, you know, going to church and everything. He goes, it wasn't about that. He actually said that thing about Iron Man when he came on my show the last time. That was the first time he ever said it. And I was like floored by that. And then it's come up again since he's been doing press for the book. We've all read the book, Into the Void, which is out now. It's fantastic. I hope we can get Geezer to come on here with us as well. It took me like three times just to get the half hour I got with him today because he's in press mode. But hopefully when that kind of dies down, we can maybe get him to hang with us here as well. Because he's fun. like the stories about how they tortured Bill Ward, set him <laughs> on fire, painted him, almost <laughs> killed him like five times. I said to Geezer today, it's amazing all four original members of Sabbath are still alive. It's crazy when you think about it. It really is. I mean, the, the stuff that they did on the road and just, you know, uh, the drugs, all the stuff they did and, and took and yeah, just torturing Bill. I mean, they almost killed him like three or four times. Yeah. And yeah. He, he said, Bill was such an, e he said, he's such an easy going bloke uh, that, you know, he mm -hmm. was just an easy target and, and, but he never got mad, you know? It, in fact, one of the stories was where they, um, they were finishing up mixing heaven and hell or something. And Bill's like, I've done my parts. I'm going home. And Tony Allen, he's like, oh, before you go, Bill, do you mind if I light you on fire? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm going home. I, I'm done. And then about 10 minutes later, Bill comes back in the door and goes, all right, you can light me on fire. <laughs> That's the best part. He thought about it. He came back and said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and then they and then they lit him on fire, and he had to go to the hospital. He had, you know, and um, I guess uh, uh, Bill's mom got in touch with Geezer's mom, and then Tony's mom oh, yeah. was screaming at him like, "You almost killed my son. He's in the hospital right now with burns." <laughs> they put alcohol on him, like which you used to clean a console or something. And they the Geezer they said today his, his Geezer said today his trousers were burned to his legs. Like, yeah, and <laughs> it's insane. Voluntarily doing that is just crazy. So. Yeah, uh, great. It's been great to have uh, some of that stuff going on. And between Tony last week, big news was made because I asked Tony last week, I don't know if we talked about it, if they were asked, Sabbath was really asked to play Power Trip. And Tony said, yeah, they were, but he passed because he was worried about Ozzy. So I asked Geezer about that today, and he said it never got on his radar, but that he didn't, Geezer didn't even know what Power Trip was. He's like, oh, he I don't know. know. No, he had right. no clue. That's great. I said, well, he said, once Tony shot it down, it must have just died right there. So. Um, Black Country Communion, we love those guys. Don, new record coming. Yeah, album number five, believe it or not. I, I, most people probably don't think they have that many out, but, uh, well, there's four out now, and there's a fifth one coming, and the, all the guys have been open about it and sharing photos from the studio, J including Joe and our friend Glenn Hughes, and um, it's done. It's a wrap. So January 2024, I'm a huge fan of that band. And uh, really excited to hear what they got going on. Derek Sherinian, Jason Bonham. So going to be cool. Yeah, I love those guys. Uh, they they rarely get to play in America live because Bonham, uh, Bonham Moss's solo career is so big, they don't do much as far as playing live. But Joe told me that they absolutely carved out time to do some live shows. And if you get to see them live, to me, that's where they're really – incredible glenn hughes continues to be the freak of freaks so but now isn't glenn hughes doing um his solo things i know he's on the monster rock cruise next march is yeah. what is he doing is he doing like uh, a deep purple thing or something yeah, i'm not 50th sure 50th anniversary of burns so he's okay. doing he's back he's out of the dead daisies karabi's back in and glenn is doing uh back to doing solo shows and yeah black country communion will never stay active constantly because Honestly, Bonamassa's career is way bigger as a solo artist. So yeah. Joe's always going to do that. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's just great that they're still making music. And I saw them live a couple times, and they're incredible live. Yeah, yeah, and Glenn and Glenn will be bringing that 50th anniversary to the states um, in August. So and it kicks yeah. off in with Jersey. Inve. So we should with go. Inve. 
Yeah. Yeah, with Engve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also today we got news. Um, well, I don't know if you guys. We should touch on this real quick. The the never ending Mick Mars Motley Crew drama. Big interview in Rolling Stone uh, by Andy Green came out a few days ago. And obviously it's the same thing in this piece. Mick fired away at some stuff. They actually interviewed Nikki and he countered some things. The lawyers were quoted in the piece. The other thing that came out was the title of Mick's album. Uh, but I don't, we may have the title now, but I still think it's going to be a long time before we get the actual record. Because my understanding is the last deal he had was going to be with Motley Crue's label. And if you're in a vicious lawsuit with Motley Crue, that label's probably not going to be wanting to put out your record. So I think uh, he's, according to the piece, he's still looking for a record deal because I would think that if he did indeed sign with their label, he's now going to have to get the record back and then replace it somewhere. But obviously, at the end of the day, it's like everything. This comes down to money and what he's owed and what he feels like he deserves in what becomes a big divorce, and it's becoming a messy one. One thing he said in that interview with Rolling Stone, which was interesting, is he said he barely played any guitar parts in the last few Motley albums. Yeah, yeah and I think that was pretty well known. I mean, people in the business knew that. I mean, I had heard that for years, that on uh, Saints of Los Angeles, it was Ashba or John Five. We knew that uh, Generation Swine, he hated that record. He told us he over, almost left over it. Karabi stuck around during New Tattoo. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, look, I, who knows? I mean, Mick not playing on the records. Mick claims Nicky's not playing live. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's a shame, you know? It's a shame all this is going on. It really is. Yeah, but, he, you know, he, I guess, he, you know, he's very concerned about his legacy when he goes. And he even... He even, you know, kind of morbidly yeah. predicts his own demise and saying pretty much I sold my publishing because I only probably have about seven or eight years left on this planet. Um, so that, you know, that was pretty dark. But um, I, I'm glad that he announced th th that there was a, at least a title to the solo album. And who knows when it'll make it out. But I think it's called The Other Side of Mars. And uh, I know there's a lot of people, including myself, who can't wait to hear it. No, I remember him talking, I think, on 2014 when he was on our old show that he, he was working on the record and it was almost yeah. done. So we're talking like nine years ago. Oh, he sent, me, he sent me clips, no joke, seven years ago saying, I want to come on next week. Will you premiere this? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And literally that's like six, seven years. It's gone through so much. So many different uh, musicians were a part of it uh, who contributed to it. I know that John Karabi was on there at one point. I think Paul Taylor from Winger was on there at one point. I know Jacob Bunton is singing on it now. Apparently it's a lot darker and kind of heavier record. There were some clips. If you remember, Mick put out like three clips on YouTube like six, seven years ago. So this thing has been like the Chinese democracy of, of uh, Motley Crue at this point. But we love Mick. And you know what else was interesting in that Rolling Stone story? It references Don... If you read it, when you, I think, asked him where you were pushing him about Motley being a farewell, and he said, if we ever come back, everyone gets free yeah. tickets. And that came up again in the Rolling Stone interview. Yeah. Yeah, he, he took a lot of heat for that one when uh, when they you know made the announcement that they were coming back. But uh, And he even put a statement out on his social media about it. But uh, Nick being a good sport about it at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely not a lot of, uh, not being a good sport about what's going on business wise with the Motley cam. Well, all right, let's get, let's, let's get to the metal six pack. Cause I want to spend all at least a half hour with Michael Anthony. Yeah. So all I think right, we're really, running a little I'm, behind. I'm going to mention Eric Farrow real quick. Okay. Um, er Eric Farrow, we, we want to say rest in peace to a guy who was all of us being from New Jersey, the legendary New Jersey band TT quick before that, a super legendary cover band called white tiger from New Jersey who was a little before our time, but Eric Farrow, powerhouse drummer. T.T. Quick may be now best known because their singer Mark Tornillo is in Accept, but Eric was from the New Orleans area, and sadly earlier this week he passed away, so I know we all wanted to put a quick uh, remembrance out to him. Yeah. Yeah, E-Rock e -Rock was the best. He, he was a, a big, big dude, but could, you know, play with the finesse of a Bonham. And I remember he always used to sit so far back from the drums, and I said – you know, why do you sit so far back there? And he said, because it's easier to reach for a beer out of the cooler. So, 
And we big burly, you, big burly Louisiana accent, but you know, hit that drum just like Bonham, that big pocket, and just an yeah. awesome guy. So uh, rest in peace to the great Eric Farrow. There's Mark with him uh, with uh, TT Quick. Probably it's probably at least eight, ten years ago. But yeah, yeah monster player. We uh, certainly mourn his loss, and condolences to his family and his friends. All right, so. Our six pack today. What do we got, Jim? What are we doing? Van Halen, right? We're doing it. Yep, we're doing the top six Van Halen albums. Sammy, Dave, whatever. So the top six is going to be our picks this week. And I always go first in the top six. And my number six um, is for unlawful carnal knowledge. I didn't like 5150 because I was a David Lee Roth guy. So when they split, I didn't want to like 5150. So I. I, you know, but then when they came to the second record with Sammy, I really dug this one. So I like this one actually better than 5150. So that's, that's why my pick number six is that with pound cake on there and uh, top of the world, some really good stuff on there. And uh, right now is great. So that's my number six, Van Halen. Who goes next? Don. That would be Mr. Jameson. All right. And number six, uh, the album Jim couldn't like because he was a David Lee Roth fan, as was I. But uh, 5150, to me, by far the best Sammy album with Van Halen Just from top to bottom, all hits, all good. Uh, so that's my number six. All right, before I do my number six, let me just say how surreal it is that we are sitting here and about to have our guest who actually was on all of these records and a part of this band. It's still ridiculous. We're about to have an original member of Van Halen on. I don't care how well we know him. It's just ridiculous. And we got to ask him about his picks. Yeah, our numbers, my number six, um, I don't have it in front of me, so just put it up because I forgot my list. Oh, for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge. Uh, I love that record. It's probably... Uh, sound wise, production wise, the late great Andy Johns worked on that. So sound wise, maybe one of the best sounding Hagar era Van Halen records. Very thick, great bottom end. I remember hearing Pound Cake for the first time, just kicked ass. It reminded me a little bit of Montrose. Uh, the, just, just really, really great songs on this record. And uh, that's my number six. All right. My number five is the uh, album 1984. Um, I like this record. I don't love it. I mean, there's a ton of hits on it, obviously, but it's not one of my favorite Van Halen records, but it is, I mean, it's very solid. But I put it at number five because they have so many better records. All right. My number five is Van Halen 2. Um, I know every Van Halen fan would have this up way higher, and I, I, and I am a massive Van Halen fan, but I, I could never get past the opening of You're No Good, into the really poppy dance the night away. It doesn't start banging until about the third song. Um, but obviously once it does, it rocks from till the end. Um, so that's why it's a little lower on my list at number five. All right. If I remember right, my number five is another Hagar era record. And I agree with Don, the best of the Sammy albums. And that's 5150. I remember hearing good enough, the opening track, Sammy just screaming out that hello baby. And just that, voice and that roar of the guitar but i gotta be honest i mean the first single from this record why can't this be love i mean it's poppy but it's a great hooky song i was a huge hagar fan before he joined van halen and i was very excited about him coming into the band because at the time he did i was kind of over roth's antics at that time so i was all in on 5150 love walks in uh, insanely great song the vocal on the on um dreams is just ridiculous so 5150 is uh, top to bottom, my favorite of that era. Uh, my number four is uh, Fair Warning, their uh, fourth record, their darkest wow. record. I love this record. I mean, it's just, you know, you got Unchained, So This Is Love, Sinner's Swing, One Foot Out the Door. Um, I really like this record a lot. Uh, mean Streets opens up with that friggin' riff. And, you know, it wasn't like a happy-go-lucky record, you know, with Roth, you know, trying to, you know, talk about banging chicks and all that stuff and party songs on here. So that's my number four, fair warning. All right, my number four is 1984. Um, listen, you know, huge hits, but also great deep cuts on this one, uh, including one of the heaviest Van Halen riffs, uh, House of Pain. So that's my number four. 
If I remember right, my number four is Fair Warning. Yep, I remember. I'm remembering my list. Uh, fair Warning. This is the record if you talk to guitar players. This is the record they will tell you is their favorite Van Halen record. And I'm not a guitar player, but it's something about the tuning. They call this record the record where Eddie discovered the brown sound, which was just that this tone that he had at the time. Among, I've talked to many guitar established guitar players. They worship this record. Hear about it later. One of my all-time favorite Van Halen songs on this record. So I, uh, I'm putting Fair Warning at four. My number three is uh, Women and Children First, a third release. Um, great follow-up to Van Halen 2. Not a bad song on this record. Uh, Fools, phenomenal. Take your whiskey home. And the Cradle Rock, I wasn't crazy about that opening up the record, but still, it's just a, a masterpiece. Number In a three. simple rhyme. I know, phenomenal. Yeah. That closed out the record. That the riff harm- at the end. And the oh. harmonies on that song, phenomenal. So number three is uh, Women and Children First. Yeah, my number three is is going to be fair warning. Um, it, it, you know, again, Mean Street, Unchained. If you have just those two songs on on any album ever, if everything else is crap, it's still going to be one of the best albums ever. The only reason for me it's a little further down is uh, it kind of fizzles at the end with that Saturday afternoon in the park into One Foot Out the Door. They're both kind of throwaways, so it, it's fizzles for me at the end but from top to there is beyond amazing jim i think we're in sync so far in these last two because my number three is women and children first oh no uh, you must be oh, no, it's not. Too. no 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 you're no this is right joe's got it right i'm wrong I'm, i just don't have my list in front of me you're right van halen two is at number three uh i'm with you don opening with a cover of you're no good set this back a little bit but then again you got doa on here and somebody get me a doctor and like so it makes a big recovery although i as the time has gone on gone by i don't hate the cover of you're no good at all oh, so oh you brilliant. don't like it at all i don't i don't i'm not bothered by it um but yeah um van halen 2 is my number three my number two is van halen 2 um, I, this is almost my number one. I love this record. Yes. You're no good. I, I don't know why there's no reason to open the album with that track, but everything else out of love again, bottoms up DOA. Somebody get me a doctor, beautiful girls. Yeah. Dance night away is poppy, but that's okay. Great but yeah. song though, still. Yeah. Right. And the only reason this isn't my number one is because of you're no good or would have been my number one. Hey, Ed, what do you think? Was that like, a, you think that was like, a, had to be a record company thing, right? I think the connection there, if I'm not mistaken, is Ted Templeman, who produced all these records, was a staff producer for Warner Brothers. And I think that uh, he also produced Linda Ronstadt and he knew of that song and he knew the songwriters and he thought that it would be good for Van Halen to take a swing at it. I believe there's some connection there with Templeman producing. Well, we'll ask Michael when he comes on a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why not ask a guy from Van Halen? That's true. Uh, my number two will be Women and Children First. I, I uh, Jim, I lo- love the album opening and the, within the Cradle of Rock. Me too. Um, I, I always thought he said, "Have you seen Junior's Grave?" When I was in high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, for all the reasons that we've we've been saying about this album, and plus, I I don't know why I just always love one of the weirdest, funnest songs on any Van. Van Halen album is Loss of Control. I don't know why. I just, I dig that song. It's just two minutes and 30 seconds of complete mayhem. So that's my number two. Well, I, we're all in, in, in all in on women and children, and I couldn't agree more. Women and Children First is my second favorite Van Halen record. It is, I think, in some ways, very underrated if there can be such a thing. I think it's the heaviest Van Halen record. Fools is just ridiculously heavy. I love In the Cradle Will Rock. Everybody wants some the gargantuan riffs in, the, in all of that. Um, the, the In a Simple Rhyme is one of my all-time favorite Van Halen songs. And then that end, that huge, chunky don't riff tacked on to the don't, end, don't, don't, don't. which I was told was like, Gonna the what the original plan for that was that was a song and they were gonna open Fair Warning with that riff and it was gonna be bookended 
but they ended up abandoning the idea. But there's actually a title for that little riff that was going to be the continuation on the next record. I think Women it's called in, The Growth. Uh, the Growth, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you, the sign of a great record is you remember exactly when you got it. I was in high school. My mom took me to the dentist. I had cavities drilled. I was in pain. And she took me to the record store, and I bought that on eight track or cassette, and I played it in her Delta Oldsmobile Delta 88, and I felt good immediately. And it feels every time I hear it, I think of that 43 years ago, brilliant, heavy, super great Van Halen record. All right. My number one is obviously the debut Van Halen record. I was lucky enough as a little kid to see these guys on tour open for Sabbath at the Garden. I had this album probably a month after it came out. I think it was in March of 78 because they were on the bill. We didn't know who they were. My older brothers were taking me, and there's Van Van Halen. So I knew this record going into the, the concert. I mean, just open it up with Running With The Devil, close with I'm Fire. There's not a bad song on here. You don't even have to skip any tracks when you listen to this record. The phenomenal debut. There's not, you know, the, there's nothing to top this as a, for a part of a Van Halen record. Well, I can top it. My number one is a different kind of truth. Ah, no, Van Halen three. Because I love uh, tattoo, tattoo. Um, yeah, Jim. I, you know, I can't add anything. You could, we, we could name all the songs on there. We, we all know them, but um, yeah, top to bottom, not a single bad note, not a single dull moment. This is the Van Halen masterpiece, and Eddie, make it unanimous. Yeah, of course, I'm going to make it unanimous. I mean, you'd be anyone would be insane not to. Top to bottom, not only the greatest Van Halen record, not only a game changer for rock music in every way, but you could make the case maybe the greatest debut album of all time from any band. It's that amazing. And this is now this is going to tell you where my head was at in 78 when this came out, being such a KISS fan. I actually got this record when it came out because Gene Simmons was the first one in the thank yous on the back jacket. So that's why I got it because ah. I'm like, oh, Gene Simmons likes it. It's got to be good. And then I dropped the needle and I heard Running With The Devil and I'm like, whoa, this is not Kiss. This is a whole other thing. And yeah, I mean, what can you say about this record that hasn't been said? It is in every way absolutely flawless and stands the test of time ridiculously. So VH1 across the board, the no brainer. All right. Um, I think we got some fans and some super chats and some fans who want to point in their top six real quick before we bring Michael on. Yeah, this Go. one wasn't a super chat, but I just found it very funny. Can Eddie talk more about his airport delays? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can enjoy them yourself if you want to try to take a flight right now. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll tell you more about them tomorrow. I'm flying tomorrow afternoon, so check in on my Twitter. I'll let you know. We got a bunch of new members. Thank you guys so much. I've been checking the comments. Hello to people in Argentina and Costa Rica who are joining us and obviously from everywhere else, but I just happened to peep those. And um, here we go, Boston Red Sox. I was just up in Massachusetts. Oh, you and 812s is the first Van Halen album I heard, which means the first song was Mine All Mine. Intro got me, and Van Halen's been my all-time favorite ever since. Thanks, I see, that scared me off, because that was that bubbly, keyboardy, synthy thing, and that was that's why OU812 oh, was not on any of our lists, because that record was where it got a little too poppy. By the way, in two weeks from today, Sammy Hagar will be with us, and we will get into the Hagar stuff with him. Um, hey, let's run our um, That Rocks picks real quick, because before we get to Michael, we should get these done. We didn't get them in last week. Okay, yep. my, mine is uh, Brian Johnson's book that came out uh, a little less than a year ago, The Lives oh, cool. of Brian. Yeah. Um, you know, I usually don't like books where they talk about their past and growing up and the family. I want to skip right to the music and the dirt and all that stuff. Well, this book isn't like that until the end. I mean, early talks about his hearing loss and what happened and all that stuff. But then the only stuff, ACDC stuff he talks about is the making of the Back in Black album and getting it in a band and, and doing the first shows on the Back in Black tour. But it's a good history of his older bands that he was in and how he got the gig in ACDC. So I like it a lot. Brian Johnson, Eliza Brian. And Brian also said at the end of the book, I will do a full ACDC book from Back in Black to present day will be my next book with, with everything in it, which I want to hear like Geezer did with the albums, go through every album and tell what's going on. So Brian Johnson's book, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Brian's book is, I had Brian on for that book and, uh, I'm going to replay that interview, I think, Monday or Tuesday next week for my radio show. And it was great. I enjoyed it. His sense of humor came through. Really, really, really great stuff. And uh, everyone's looking forward to that one show. We'll see if there's more. 
All right, so no uh, no death metal this week. Um, I'm going a little more traditional, but for the members, um, we, I am going to do a uh, Eddie, please guess the death metal logo um, during the member show. So uh, I will do that then. But right now I got Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. I just did some shows with them in England. They have a new album coming out in September. So pre-order it now. It's called Kings of the Asylum. It's Phil Campbell from Motorhead and literally three of his sons uh, are in the band. So, I mean, you know, I got, you got to give Phil credit, man. He's got the most musical jizz in rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> as long as he can have sex, he can always have a band. And um, I heard this, they played this for me on their bus, which I really appreciate. And uh, it's really, really good, really heavy. And uh, of course, you know, you're going to hear things that are reminiscent of Motorhead because when Phil plays, that's what you hear. But uh, his sons are super involved as well. And uh, great, great rock and roll record. And it's more it's more melodic than Motorhead. I like it a lot. There's a lot of melody in it. And there's a new singer this for this record. They have a new the only person in the band that's not one of Phil's kids is the singer. Yeah. And they got a new one and he sounds great. It, it, there's a single and video out from it. It's really good. It's so I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, really good. Uh, so My That Rocks is an album from 1983 that is getting a reissue in a couple of weeks from Brian May, and it ties in with our Van Halen theme. Back in 83, Brian May did a jam, and the band included Eddie Van Halen, Brian May on guitar and vocals, bassist Phil Chen, and Alan Gratzer from Ario Speedwagon on drums, and Fred Mandel... Michael Anthony has the link, everybody. We're all good. I sent it to him. We're good. Um, and Fred Mandel on keyboards. I'm getting notes about panic about Michael. He's He's got the link. We're good. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, it was called Starfleet. And what made it so unique, at the time, it was only three songs. But what made it so unique is if you think about it, Eddie Van Halen hardly did anything ever outside of Van Halen, outside of playing Beat It, the yeah. solo and Beat It. So this was him doing like a full jam with those guys. And now, 40 years later, Brian May has remixed it, found the master tapes, all the jams they did, is putting it out in one big box set. And I had Brian on my radio show yesterday talking about this. And what's amazing about it is you hear them talking between the songs. You hear them working stuff out. And they're just noodling. And you just go inside that studio and hear that. And speaking of Van Halen, again, this is 83. One of the times they start the song on one of the takes that Brian May put on here, Eddie Van Halen starts playing the intro to Top of the World from Four Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, wow. like seven years before it became a song. So if you're like a super geek, you can pick all that little stuff out. Um, super expanded version of this record and really done more to celebrate Eddie because there's so little out there. Or as Brian will tell you, Eddie Van Halen hated being called Eddie. He wanted to be called either Ed or Edward. So uh, regardless, it's just a, a great document of, of Ed Van Halen just prior to the 1984 record. And it's a really, really cool thing to hear. That's great. That's fun. That's seeing the light of day and, you know, in a proper form. Yeah. He put a lot of work into it. He remixed it and he, uh, he he found all the master tapes. He even found interviews he did back then about the record. And he also, uh, I didn't know this. Brian May had his own band for a while called the Brian May Band. Cozy Powell was his drummer. He was the singer. He went out and played a bunch of shows back then. And some live stuff from that record is also included. Killer band. It sounds great. I don't know how I missed the fact that he was doing that at that time. I mean, I was really young, but still. It's uh, really cool to hear that that's in there. Remember we interviewed him uh, when we were over in England for the Download Festival. We interviewed Brian May. And, man, that he could not have been cooler and more down to earth. And I remember, I, Jim, I think it was you and I were standing up on the side of the stage watching a band play. And, uh, you know, I feel somebody kind of walk up on the left and I kind of glance over and, and I take a double take. And I'm like, Brian May, Brian May. You know, and our producer, we told our producer and he went and got him and he said he'd come and agree to an interview and he was super cool. And, you know, I, you know hearing him talk about like doing a, a benefit concert and, and how intimidated he was 
by um, playing with Eric Clapton and sort of like, you know, you're Brian May though, right? You know, he's just, you know, totally down to earth guy, astrophysicist, legendary guitar player. Uh, but yeah, I'm super killer guy. So now that was in 2008. We went over to Download Festival. We did a, that metal show special over there. We were interviewing all the bands. What was that incident again on stage where we got yelled at? I can't remember. We're introducing bands with, you know, 80,000 people oh, there. That's oh, right. no. Was it Tesla? We were supposed to, we weren't supposed to in introduce them? No, no. You kept the mic. Right? I walked off with their microphone. That's a legendary story that those guys still talk about. <laughs> By the way, Michael Anthony's texting me. He's having trouble, Joe, connecting because he had to get Google Chrome and it's not launching. So I told him to try Firefox. He's texting me right now. I'm trying to deal with him. But uh, Dom, what was we'll that? Have him soon. Dom, what was that story again? Didn't I get yelled at because I went on stage and introduced him anyway or something? <laughs> that guy was miserable because they, they were oh, running yeah. late on time and you weren't having it. You still walked out there like, hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, yeah, because uh, we're in front of download. I'm like, I'm gonna go out on stage at least introduce them. The guy's like, yeah. we don't have time. I'm like, too bad. I'm going anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. You just went, and Eddie had Jeff Keith's microphone, which no one told us because again, we weren't supposed to go out there, but uh, we couldn't pass up the opportunity. So we just bull our way out there. We do the intro. The crowd's going nuts, and next thing you know, you see them coming on the stage, and Jeff Keith is like running at Eddie. But we're exiting stage right, and they're coming on stage left, and he chases Eddie all the way. I was all the way down the ramp. Yeah, yeah. yeah to the other side. He's like, "You have my mic," and they're <laughs> they're launching into modern day cowboy, <laughs> and he just made it in time. Yeah, the mic was in my back pocket, and I was like, "Oh, because we, because nobody knew us in England, even no. though that metal show. I mean, the show was not was people barely knew us in the U.S. at that point. I think it was the first or second season, but in England, they had no clue who we were. So we had to call in a favor because we wanted a shot of us on stage with the crowd. So Tesla, being our boys, they're like, "Yeah, you can bring us on." And then we went out there like three clowns. We did our bit, and I was the last one to talk. And I put them, and I didn't. Usually, they give you a mic. A separate designated mic. just for the intro and we're standing back there like oh it was so cool and turn around and there's jeff like my mic my mic but oh, it's great those you know those stage managers are and especially the british ones they're all just cranky oh, and yeah. miserable beyond belief and they wanted nothing to do with us i just ran out there oh. and anyway. let's just go fuck them he gave think, he gave you the death stare. Yeah, yeah. That I, I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. And you just and you have not a care in the world. Do you no, like let's go? Sure. Let's, yeah. I don't think we've been back to download since, maybe for that reason. <laughs> oh man. I wish I, I wish I we could find that footage, man. We had so many great interviews. I think the VH1 only aired it like once or twice. We interviewed so many, so many artists there, but they didn't really and just that raw footage of all those long interviews we had with all those bands. Yeah. Or what about the interviews we did before the Golden Gods? We yeah. Did like two hours on the red carpet that it turned into sixty seconds on a pre show. Yeah, I mean, well, all that... that stuff, man. There's just amazing stuff there. Remember it at uh, Download, we had Chris Cornell hanging out with us all day. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing, and the thing I remember the most about Cornell, again, another super nice, down to earth guy. But he said, "I'll do the interview only if I can sing your opening theme," which obviously didn't have lyrics, but he sang the 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 music to it. Um, as we came in. I don't know if you guys remember that. But no, I don't know. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, I've seen the show. I'm a fan or this or that. But he truly was. And he sang our opening theme, which, of course, was written by Bumblefoot. So I I'll never forget that, man. Um, he was uh, such a good dude. All right, Michael's here. Let's do it. All right, let's bring him on. I could, you know, hey, guys, you know, Eddie, the, uh, <laughs> the guy that I am, you know, tech savvy guy. <laughs> Did not download. I'm I'm here. I'm texting with Eddie going, Eddie, I'm trying to download Chrome. I can't get this. I can't get the file. I can't get on. I I went on my iPhone. I got it on my iPhone. So oh, there got, you go. I'm, you I'm look and sound anyway. great, man. That's all that matters. I, I, Come on. I, I, I need a pair of glasses to see everybody. <laughs> we, you know, better I'm not seen, seen Michael. We're yeah. way better <laughs> not seen. You can just hear us. It's all good. All right. How you guys got the last time I saw all three of you guys together, we were doing that metal show, I think. Yeah. 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 Remember but you remember when remember when Sammy co-hosted with us and wanted to grill you? I remember you and Sammy bamboozling me into that. And Sammy <laughs> said he was gonna ask me all the difficult questions. 
Yeah, because we didn't we didn't want to put you on the spot. So like Sammy's like, no, no I will. will. We're like, no, I will. I'm like, all right, good. Then let yeah. Sammy do it. Yeah. That's no, what Sammy what Sammy actually what Sammy actually said to me, Michael, was you guys had come on before, and Sammy goes, Sammy calls me. He goes, look, he goes, I want to come back on. He goes, but I want to be the fourth host. I said, why? He goes, because. Michael's getting off too easy here. We got to we got to dig into him a little. He's too nice. Yeah, we got to grill into him. Know. And that was the only time we ever did the show where we had a fourth person to open the show. Remember, you guys? We had <laughs> yeah. Sammy was literally our co-host. Great, and I had to be the guy. I had to <laughs> you were great, great, man. You were great. <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing? I, you know, I'm sitting here usually at this time in the afternoon here. On the, are you? You guys are all on the East Coast, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I'm here. You know. Newport Beach, Southern California, summer's finally kicked in, you know, right right outside my house, you know, chicks are paddleboard, you know, the whole thing's happening now, you know, and so I'm sitting around, usually at this time, I'll hop on my bike and go take a, a, a ride down the boardwalk or somewhere along the beach, and this thing's happening at 4.30 my time in the afternoon, and I'm like, so I got bored, so I had to... <laughs> I, I kicked I kicked cocktail hour up a half hour. There you go. <laughs> <Get in. laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but I, yeah, you know what? Here, I actually turned this on. This is in my my office here because I think Sammy and I were supposed to do this together. Yeah, he's in Cabo. That, yeah, that's what that's. Yeah, that's kind of like where Sammy is right there. Now, you know? <laughs> he's like he text he texted me this morning because I went by his place because he's got a. Uh, him and his wife, Kari, have a place uh, not too far from me here uh, from Newport Beach. And so uh, my wife, Sue, and I went over there and we hung out with him a little bit yesterday afternoon. And, you know, he's his his big thing, him and his wife, Kari, you go into this like exquisite mansion down there where he's at. And you walk inside and, and Kari goes, oh, come on out. And, you know, like, come on outside on the patio and check this out. And the whole thing's converted into like this freaking nut. Uh, ecosystem garden type things goes oh my god look i'm growing tomatoes here and i'm growing that there and sammy had a bunch of figs and he brought out wine and go you know he did his whole freaking spiel and we sat there and drank wine and whatever and then he texts me this morning he's getting on his plane to go to cabo and he goes hey have fun with eddie trunk today that's all he says so <laughs> yeah he told me he goes i can't do it he said to me he goes i can't do it but mikey's gonna do it i'm gonna tell mikey yeah. he's got to do it yeah yeah, and yeah. Then, and then he, well, he's coming on with us in two weeks, but he was telling me about you because we were trying to reach you. Sammy called me when I was setting this up and he called me and he goes, where's Mikey? He goes, he's not responding to us on text. He goes, it's not like him. And then he, he said, I go, I don't know. I said, I don't know. Maybe he went away. And he goes to me, yeah, he does crazy shit. Like he gets in that RV that he has. He goes, he goes to all these crazy locations. He could be off the grid for all we know. <laughs> That's good. That's Sammy. Well, you know what? If I'm around, man, maybe I should be the you know the fourth co-host. Oh, and grill him a little bit. You should, but oh. you should, you should bomb him in two yes. weeks. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that after after we finish up here. Yeah, that'd be you great. Know, yeah. Hey, you know, uh, he gets off. He, he gets off too easy, he, and he's got you know his, his excuses. Oh man, but I did a three hour hour interview with this yesterday, and blah blah blah, and my my beach bar rum and this, and I got blah blah blah. He goes, you know. But uh, Mikey will do it, <laughs> yeah. that, which that's okay. I always love hanging and talking with you guys. So Yeah, I appreciate it. No, no problem. Michael, ahead, be Jim. before you came on, uh, we had a, a, we call it a metal six pack, our top six Van Halen records. So we all went oh, through really? ours. Yeah. So we all, we all concluded that the first one, the debut was number one, but our, our number two was a lot different. Mine was Van Halen two. I think I forget what Eddie's was. Women and children. Women and first. children for me at number two. Okay. So where would you put them? But where would I put them? Yeah. Oh man, you know it's so it's so it's so hard. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, the only album that I would kind of put a little lower down on the list, you know, not up really on, on my on my top, you know, top five or whatever would be uh, Diver Down, only because there was so much cover stuff that we did on it. Ted, Ted Templeman, when we were doing that record, he was like, oh, man, yeah, this song, Dancing in the Strong, this will be a hit. Ted Templeman was always doing that. He was always going, this song will be a hit again, guys. You got to do it. You got to do it. And we did it with You're No Good early on in the career, you know. And it actually, you know, kind of worked for us. But by the time it came to Dancing in the Streets, I was kind of like going, 
Yeah, well, you know, and he's going, yeah, he can play this funky bass line. I'm going, no, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. I, mean, I dig them all. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's really funny because, uh, you know, uh, lately or the the last year or whatever, you know, everyone's talking about will there ever be a tribute, will there ever, you know, to, to Eddie and, and whatever. And, you know, it's hard feeling all this stuff because, uh, uh, you know, at, at this point, I think it all pretty much hinges on Alex as far as, you know, whether something like that's going to happen uh, because, you know, he has to be involved. But uh, I just recently started uh, when I practice at home, I'm, I'm going to be ready for anything that might happen. And I'm, I'm uh, starting to go, I'm going to go through all of our albums now and I'm going to, I'm just stuff that I've forgotten. I'm going to relearn. I'm going to know everything in the Van Halen catalog. So whether it's Sammy or Roth or Sharon or who knows who, this guy be ready right now. Well, Michael, yeah, I got to ask you this since you brought this up. <laughs> so, so on Instagram, a few fans pointed this out to me. Sammy uh -huh. responded to somebody on Instagram a few days ago and was asked if there was ever going to be a Van Halen tribute of some sort. And Sammy replied in the comments and said, next year, whoever's in is in. We're doing it. And that raised a lot of eyebrows. Now, I know that's a question for Sammy, but... He yeah, said that is. And he's on the Instagram. Guy's have to answer. You know, see, it's like, you know, Sammy goes, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because, you, know, you know, Sammy, uh, you know, Eddie, you know more than uh, anybody else that, you know, every morning when he wakes up, he's got a different plan going, you know. Right. And he always, yeah. most of the time he calls me and he says, hey, Mikey, you know, we got to do this, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, uh, so when it comes to that, I'm going to let him talk to you about that, you know. Well, he can talk, he talk to the, guy, the person. But, but, but we do. But Sammy and I have been talking about, I mean, you know, we've waited so long for a tribute or whatever. And I, and I know Wolfgang, you know, and, and God bless him. He's doing great, doing his own thing. And uh, I think I, I read an interview that he did after he played the Taylor Hawkins uh, tribute thing, saying that uh, the Van Halen stuff that he did was tribute enough for him to his dad. Yeah. And he and he was and he was good with it, and that's great. I respect that, you know. But uh, you know, I'm really I'm bummed out because I wish that something like that would happen. You know, I mean, not not something that we would, you know, obviously make any money off of, but do a thing like well, like how they did either with Taylor Hawkins or whatever, because you know every guitarist in the world would want to sure. be part of it, and it would probably be the best freaking concert, uh, you know. But you know, so I. I wait, but I but I'm prepared. I'm ready. If anything, You're ready. Ready. Yeah. but you know what's great about Michael? You, you have you don't do any social media at all, do you? Uh, very little. You know, I do a little bit of Instagramming and whatever, but you know, no. Yeah, well, <laughs> Michael's oh, yeah. always you always stayed out of the fray. You never want to get involved in the mix. I like that. You just low key, like whatever. Yeah, I'm not getting involved in that drama. Yeah, I don't like to get involved. Like exactly what you just said, Jim. I don't want. I don't like to get involved in the drama, yeah. you know. And that was and that was that was really hard, uh, you know. In certain times in Van Halen, you know, because believe me, there's it, it's kind of funny because I I look on TV and I'm watching things like you know behind the music or whatever with other bands. I go, oh my god, look at all the shit they went through. Look, man. And then I sit back and I go, oh, my God, ours is we got probably the most drama out of anybody. You know? <laughs> Can you imagine if there was social media back then, Michael? With oh, the, my you guys God. Were up to? Oh, well, Wolf, well, Wolf said it when people keep asking about all this stuff. Wolf is now just deferring to his uncle and saying, you know, talk to Alex. And yeah. but Wolf actually said, I think it was in Rolling Stone. He goes, no one would believe the level of dysfunction. And uh you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that a band at that level, which, you know, I, I've told you this before, Michael. I mean, I view Van Halen like the American Led Zeppelin. I mean, I yeah. I think it's that important and it's that impactful, if not more so. So it's just hard because, you know, the fans, they all want more. They want – I talked to Brian May on my radio show yesterday. Right, He's yeah, putting out like this uh, Starfleet thing that Eddie did with him 40 years ago because we talked about it. There's just like nothing even from Eddie outside of the band. So yeah. people are just dying for anything. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, and obviously Eddie's brother, Alex, I, I think Eddie's the only guy he's ever played with. Right. I think there was, I think there was one time, that, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, a year or whatever before Eddie passed that uh, the Kenny Chesney was here in town in L.A. 
And I heard that Eddie and Alex went to the show and they got up and they played. You really got me with him. You know, it's like and Kenny Chesney. I love him. He's the one guy that yeah. comes down to Cabo and everyone's going, yeah, we'll play some Kenny Chesney songs and him and his band get up there. And they just want to play Van Halen. You know, it's like, oh man, let's play this and that. Or, but, uh, you know, Alex, he's, he's never, he's never played. I think jam with anybody besides his brother. That's um, crazy, man. You know, I, I, I love him for that, but it is, it is kind of, kind of crazy. Like me, I have a cocktail, and I go. I'll jam with yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> band playing down the street. <laughs> I'm there, dude. Let's, you know. What but, are you? Uh, what are you drinking anyway, by Michael? Uh, oh God. Okay, I guess I got to plug it. A little bit of Sammy's Spice Beach Bar Rum and Coke. <laughs> I was gonna say, if it wasn't oh, one of yeah. his boozes, right. you'd never hear the end of it, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do get it for free, so hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Hey, which is better, Michael, the the, uh, the beach bar rum or the tequila? You, got a uh, you know what? I actually like the tequila better myself, and I do I do take a nip of that on stage when we're out when we're out touring his uh, Santo Mesquila that he came out with. Uh, I love that stuff. I can drink it straight, and I can drink a lot of it, and I feel, <laughs> I'll feel great the next morning as long as I don't mix it with anything else. You know, right? Well, now, let's say. Let's let Sammy plug his shit when he's on next yeah, week. Yeah, there you go. How about you plugging your shit? Michael Anthony makes an awesome hot sauce that I've been a big <laughs> fan and outspoken lover of for a while. Matt Anthony's uh, Cafe. How's the hot sauce doing? Any new developments hot, in the hot sauce world? Hot sauce is, is doing great. We're actually in, you know, I've uh, within the last, uh, I think, a year or so, I hired my oldest daughter on, and she kind of uh, does a lot of the marketing and stuff uh, for me now. And uh, we are currently in the process of looking uh, to get uh, my mustard anyway into uh, a couple of stadiums here. And, if, you know, if you can get it into like, you know, like Eddie, like Legion Stadium in Vegas or whatever, you know. And there's also I don't know if you've heard of it, Eddie. There's a, a, a pizza place called Pizza Rock in Vegas. Have you ever heard yes, of that? Yeah. I there? haven't been there, but I've heard of it. OK, well. My wife and I, we discovered that one year, and every time I go out there, I've got a place at the RV resort out there because I, I do like to go out in my bus. I got a big bus, and you know. But uh, my wife and I, we eat at Pizza Rock all the time now, and I actually, the, the owner of those that company is Tony Gamnati, I think is his name. And this guy's like, I go, I go, I go, I told my daughter, I said, oh, we got to get my sauces in, this, in Pizza Rock anyway, you know, because they've got a bunch of other, you know, I won't mention the sauce, you know, Tibetan, you know, all those other sauces. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, so my daughter sends uh, an email and, and finds this guy, Tony Gamnati, who's, you know, and I find out that this guy is like a world renowned, like he's number one in the world pizza thrower. He wins all these contests in Naples, Italy for, for, uh, uh, Italian food and whatever, and he's opened up all these places. So my, so we sent him. Uh, my daughter got a hold of him, and, and he wants us to send him samples and stuff. And the the, the reason I originally did it is because I heard that they've got a couple of places in Allegiant Stadium now. So I'm all, yeah, you know, try to get the sauce in there. But you know, it, it's all fun. I don't I don't look to do it. I'm not as hardcore as Hagar is on all the alcohol and stuff. To right. me, I, I like to keep it more fun. You know, what's the so. coolest piece of um? Van Halen memorabilia that you have, Michael. A cool piece of Van Halen memorabilia? Yeah, do you have anything like a piece of a stage set or, you know, anything from over the years that you kind of treasure? You know, I'd have to look. You know, I've got stuff like, you know, when uh, we came out with this, uh, with, the, with the EP before our first album ever came out. It was, it was a thing that we came out that Warner Brothers put out on red vinyl. And it had like Elmer Fudd on it. Eddie, you'd know that because you know all this stuff, right? I don't have it, but I know of it. Like four songs on it. I've got a whole bunch of, of those, you know, stuff like oh. that. I've got, you know, I've. Uh, Let me know when you give you my address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, as far as actual stage, whatever memorabilia, no. You know, it's kind of funny because when, when Dave left the band, uh, all of our road cases, all our wardrobe cases and everything was at his house. And so that all went with him when he left the band, hmm. you know, and uh, so all that stuff is gone. And uh, what about the Jack Daniels bass? Oh, I've got I've got that. In the fact, original uh, one? I've got the Well, the original one right now is uh, at the Hall of Fame in, in uh, Cleveland. Oh, OK. Uh, that's on loan to them right now. And then I have I have two other ones. I built a second one that we kind of was a backup to the first. And then the third one I had built for our 2004 
uh, the Van Halen debacle tour. <laughs> that, uh, there was a lot of that, drama on that tour. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> drama was the middle name of that tour. Well, so it, it was. was so that Mike. was the reunion with Sammy when Sammy yeah. talks about in his book when Eddie had the samurai hair, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. or, you know, the Pebbles Flintstone or however you wanted to, you know. Yeah. I was at that show at the Meadowlands, and I hate to say it, but half the night he was playing a different song than the rest of you guys. Yeah, we had to learn to uh, really uh, be spontaneous. And I, you know, obviously, you know, I, lo I loved Eddie, and I don't like to... I don't like to even say anything bad about even, you know, all the bad stuff we went through and he sure. went, he was going through a real difficult time in his life. You know, we didn't yeah. understand it at the time. It was kind of like, all we were like, you know, Hey dude, let's go out. We can tour the world 10 times, blah, 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 this or that, whatever. And it was, it was a really difficult, really difficult thing. Was that, was that, was there more drama on that tour than oh, any other? That, no, than any other the raw tours. When <laughs> Dave, a drink. You're making him a drink. No, when, there was, there when was, Dave was in the band, was it there any, was a, there was always drama on the Roth tours too. Right, but not as a, bad. There was a different kind of drama. Yeah, not yeah, so okay. bad. I mean, there were there were times, you know. Uh, God, I forget which tour it was. I'll just give you a real quick little story. Not Please. so much drama, but just you know how it was how, with Dave on tour. Uh, we were staying somewhere in the Midwest, and Dave, we all after this, we all kind of came to the conclusion that he was bipolar. Mm -hmm. Because he would be great, and then all of a sudden he would just like kind of freak out or whatever. And one night, it's like you know we have the night off, and everybody was whatever we were doing. It was like around midnight, one in the morning, and everyone was pretty much back at the hotel. And I hear all this commotion out in the hall and pounding and screaming. I'm going, "What the hell's going on?" So I, I, you know, I put my shorts on. I go walk down the hall, and our security guys have got Roth in a straitjacket. Okay, now see that our security guys used to carry a straight jacket on tour. I won't get into that part of it, okay? Right. But they used to carry a straight jacket on tour, and Roth was just like, like screaming, naked, sitting in this in one of our security guys' rooms, wearing this straight jacket. And supposedly he, you know, Dave, he liked to drink Jack Daniels, but he couldn't handle it like I can handle it, you know. <laughs> Dave, had, Dave, Dave had a little bit of Jack Daniels, and he get a little, little crazy, and. uh I guess they found him wandering around outside the hotel naked. <laughs> after, you know, and this is just one night out of seven nights a week, you know, being on tour. So Yeah, well, that's, that's well, you what you didn't want social media in your life back then. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Michael, would you ever, would you ever. Social media really started kicking in. The partying really started kind of calming down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Michael, two, two quick things, because we don't have a ton more time, but I want to sure. ask you, I always wanted to ask you this. Um, first of all, what were you like? I know you were in a band before joining Van Halen because they yeah. actually were knocking around playing backyards with a different bass player, I think. And then, but you were around and you had your own band, which I think you were the lead singer in. Can, yeah. can you talk a, a minute about like your history before joining VH and like what what you were doing? And did you used to go see them at those backyard parties? Yeah. Well, I mean, I I knew eddie and i didn't know them but i knew of eddie and alex because after high school i went to pasadena city college which in this area in that area there was just you know it's just an extension of high school basically and uh, eddie and alex were taking uh uh jazz improv classes and i actually was taking a jazz improv class and i, I don't know why you know i was taking that but it, you know it was cool and i'd see those guys sometimes going back and forth from classes uh, I grew up in uh, the city called Arcadia, and they were having a uh, a big carnival out in the field, where like the football field and whatever. One weekend, and uh, that's the first time I ever saw those guys play. It was Eddie and Alex. Roth wasn't even in the band yet. Eddie and Alex, and uh, Mark Stone was playing bass, and uh, Eddie was doing all the singing. But it was it'd be like they'd launch into this thing where you know they'd play a whole bunch of cream, and Eddie was just like you know note for note. I'm sure you know you've read about all that stuff. And uh, so I knew of them there, you know, through all that. And, uh, you know, subsequently Dave joined the band and a band that I was playing in, we were called Snake, very original name. <laughs> and uh, we actually opened up for Van Halen at a little theater in uh, at the Pasadena City College, opened up for Van Halen. And that's actually my first contact when I first met those guys. And uh, I remember uh, sitting in the parking lot talking to Eddie for like maybe a couple hours after that gig, just, you know, 
hey, you know, you know, because everybody knew who everybody was, but, you know, everybody kind of sneered, all the bands, you know, they kind of like, yeah, oh, that's that guy in that band and that's that guy in that band. And it was through a mutual friend, actually, of uh, Eddie's and mine that Eddie knew uh, going to the Pasadena City College and a good friend of mine, he was uh, my friend in high school, that he found out that their bass player was, they were getting rid of their bass player. And he went to Eddie and said, hey, Eddie, my buddy Michael, Ans you know, Michael Soboleski, you know, uh, you know, I think he'd be interested in joining. And that's, you know, and uh, actually Alex called me, but, you know, but I was playing in this band called Snake. And we were, you know, we were doing basically uh, backyard parties. We were, we were doing some original stuff, but obviously not, uh, you know, Van Halen, they were, they were playing Hollywood, you know, they're playing Gazaris on the strip. You know, we weren't doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah. you know, it was basically jeans and t-shirt type stuff, you know, and, uh, but yeah, you're gonna write a book one day, man. Everybody else you know, is doing I, a book. You're gonna I, do a book. I, I I get pressed by a couple of people. In fact, the uh, uh, the guy after I forget his name right offhand. The guy who did Sammy's book. He's he's been after me to do do a book, and I don't know. You know, it's like, what do I do? Do I do what Sammy? You know, Sammy. He just kind of bared it all. You know, yeah. his wife pro his wife was his wife was thinking divorce probably after that after she read the book. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and there, you know, and there, there were there were a couple of things that he toned down. You know, because I, he asked me to write the forward in the book, and then the the van, the chapter on the Van Halen reunion type, uh, the Van Halen reunion uh, part. Uh, I told him, I said, Sammy, got to change this, change this, change that, and all this stuff was true. But I said, you can't be, you know, talking like that. And that's the one. That's the one kind of fine line. That do I go out and just do a tell all? But I'm, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to alienate alienate any fans or what you know because yeah. I'll tell you but if I you know if I open this up and spilled out what I you know, I, you know. <laughs> but then everybody else in the band did too you know that was kind of like the, the the boys club you know the unspoken rule that you never never said yeah. anything bad about your brothers you know but uh, yeah. you know I think I think sometime I'd like to but I'd like to do it the right way I don't want I don't want like the you know the dirt you know. And I know a lot of people like they want to they want to read the, all the dirt. Hey, so we'll yeah. each hit you with one last thing, and then we'll let you go. Last thing from me: um, last you were on my radio show not long ago, you were doing your own band where you were gonna oh. play some <laughs> songs, and I think you had John Five yeah. up there playing with you, and you did that club gig, and yeah. then that when you came on and announced that, and that got people thinking like, wow, Michael's got his own thing going. He's gonna roll with the band. He's gonna record. Like where where are you at with that? Is that was that just a one off thing, or do you want to turn that into something? You know that that show was supposed to be just a one off thing, and it actually just stemmed from my my daughter talked me into auctioning off a bass the year before uh, for her foundation. It's called Save the Heartbeat, and I did. And then and then her my son in law, you know the knucklehead he is, he goes, hey, let's have somebody you know auction off the chance to come up and jam with you. And, you know, I had a couple cocktails whenever I go, yeah, that'd be a cool idea. Well, next thing you know, this guy spends all his money to do that. And then the next day I'm going, well, how are we going to do this? You know, I can't go, hey, Sammy, Jason, you know, you guys, hey, I got this guy's going to come up and, and Jay, you know. So then that's how this whole kind of gig uh, got put together. And then everybody's looking at me going, okay, Mike, you got all your buddies. Have all your buddies play this thing. And I'm going, oh, geez. And, you know. Surprisingly enough, you know, it was great. I called, you know, like John Five and uh, a Bumblefoot and you know, a bunch of other people came and played it. And uh, we are thinking of possibly doing it again and doing it, uh, you know, I don't want it to be something that's like a real big formal type thing. I'd like to really keep it casual, but uh, possibly uh, do it somewhere and get a big, a big venue, you know, a bigger venue, because this was like a 700 seat club. And uh, I mean, it was great. The whole thing turned out great. And everybody that came, you know, uh, Trey Cool from Green Day, he's my neighbor down here. He came and, you know, it's just everybody who came to do it. And Hagar even showed up, you know, at the last minute. He said, it, you know, and, uh, uh, but yeah, I'd like, I'd like to do it again, you know, for to do it for the foundation. But it was really fun. It's the first time I had ever uh, put anything even on that scale together. And and it was it was a lot of fun. You guys got anything before we let him go? No. Hey, one thing I want to tell you, though, that I was going to mention if we if we talked about it, you know, because we were talking about tribute stuff. The other day, uh, and this is just coming from me. The other day, I listened to uh, there's a new song that Wolfgang's got out. Take a bow. It's called. I don't know if you if yeah. you guys have heard it yet. Yeah. Yep. 
And I heard that song and, you know, it's, it's a long song for what it is, but when the solo kicked in, I seriously got goosebumps. I don't know if his father, if Ed was channeling through his kid, but to me, that was something that Eddie would have played to a piece of yeah. music like that. And I was like, I was getting goosebumps. I was freaking out. And then, uh, then I read somewhere where Wolfgang said that he used one of Ed's, his original Frankenstrat and one of his early Marshalls that he used, uh, for when we recorded you know, the early Van Halen records and, uh, it just, it was just, a, it was just a really, I mean, I love, I love what he's doing, you know, yeah. and that's why, you know, whatever he says about, you know, reunion or this, that, I mean, if, if we ever did something and he was part of it, that'd be great. I'd love, I'd love to jam with him, you know, but uh, I, I love what, I love what he's doing on his own and he's, he's kicking ass out there. For sure. Hey, hey, Mike, oh, go ahead, Jim. No, oh, you could go, you go. No, I was just going to say, Michael, if you, if you need a pair of, um, <laughs> These sneakers, I have a friend who can boot, I mean, officially license them for you. <laughs> Dude, um, are, they, are they like Converse? Are they like flat Converse stuff? Because, you know, I can't wear Converse. I have flat feet, dude, at like three blocks, and I'm I'm done. I'm laying down. I know. I need the arches. Down. I'm like that, too. Yeah. It sucks getting old. I got the inserts, Jason, all that. Jason gave me a pair. They had these special Led Zeppelin shoes they came out with. And I've got, I've got the pair, brand new in the box. They look freaking great. I tried them on. I go, yeah, check these out. I'm telling my wife, and I go on out and I'm wearing them. And after about two blocks or, you know, yep. 20 minutes, whatever, I'm going, oh, man, God. I was like, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's how they make them. ACDC's got them. Um, Black Sabbath's got them. Um, yeah. th th those flat Converse ones. So I don't yeah, wear them either. I just keep them. Make them. That's got a little bit of support in them. I got, I got the Converse ones. Somebody gave me ones that say 78 on them. with, uh, And they're actually licensed with Eddie Van Halen playing guitar on the side of the sh sneaker. They're awesome. Oh, really? Same thing, Michael. I can't. Two minutes, my feet are killing. I got When you get to be our age, man, it's, it's comfort over fashion anytime. Mm. You know, I, well, <laughs> look at look at us. You're a you're well, a t-shirt guy. I still have to be kind of fashion conscious, you know. A little bit of just for men on the goatee. You know, <laughs> you know that's, that's, the way, that's the way I'm rolling right now because I'm not ready to cut it all loose yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not you're not giving up yet. Hey, well, I'm younger than you I, when I, I am. You really, I will tell you really quick because I wanted to. You know, when you're asking about uh, what we're doing, Sammy and I, we do have some cool stuff we're talking about for next year. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying, but I am saying, you know, with Eddie gone and nothing happening, Sammy and I are brainstorming on some really cool stuff that we're hopefully going to put together. For That's next awesome. Year. Now, we're doing cool, we're so, some cool people. So no, cool people. no Sammy dates uh, this year. Maybe just doing the Sammy Bash in Cabo we're, in October. Yeah, we're doing. A, we're just doing a few spot dates. We have a couple dates in July. Like we're doing. I think we're doing the 15th of July. We're doing the Pearl Room, the Circle. We're doing the Pearl Room at the Palms. Right. Eddie, if Eddie, if you're around, if you're in town. Yeah, I got on my calendar. Well, yeah, we got yeah, and we're we're you know, we're doing just a couple shows like that. And then uh uh beginning of next year in February, I believe we're doing this thing at this Rock Legends cruise. We did it once before. Yep. And uh I know Billy Gibbons is on it now. I just Sammy just told me the, uh, yesterday that uh, Collective Soul's doing it and there's a bunch of other people that signed up for it. So, you know, that those are interesting because Hagar <laughs> does not do well on a boat. <laughs> no, no why not on a ship at all well <clears throat> 50 percent of it is he just he just gets sick on boats like that and the other 50 percent is that he just locks himself in his room anyway. yeah yeah where <laughs> yeah because you're stuck on the boat for five days you can't go anywhere yeah you know yeah but you but you can well we we did one once before and i i went out and i hung out at the pool with some fans and you know yeah. See, that, I can I can you gotta be, you, you gotta, gotta be willing to want to. They gotta carry me back to my room, but right, you gotta get yourself <laughs> in the headspace for that. I, I get it. Yeah, hey, it was Mike, fun. We did, we did it once before with Bad Company. It was, it was a lot of fun. So Michael, part of that, but that's if great, we do, man. We, if we do something, hopefully, we're looking, we're looking uh, towards uh, next summer. So, Michael, we got this quick question before the show ends. This big, I'm a segment. It's called this versus that, and this week it's going to be the fair, fair warning record against women and children first. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. So we're going to make our picks. We'll start with me. We'll work our way down right. from the top. Yes. So me, Jim, Don, and then Michael, you're the deciding guy. Tell us who's right and who's wrong. We kind of talked about this when we did the six pack earlier, but I'm between these two records. I'm going women and children. I think it's a super underrated record. 
I think in a simple rhyme, one of my all time favorite VH songs, Fools, uh, just uh, Everybody Wants Some, Cradle Will Rock, uh, Romeo Delight, just insanely great record. Not to say Fair Warning isn't, but I give the edge to women and children. All right, I'm Jim. giving I'm giving the edge to women and children first, only because I just I wasn't crazy about push comes to shove on on uh, fair warning, and <laughs> what, yeah, Whoa. yeah, I don't that know. Was, I, that's that's, 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 that's what happens when you let Roth go vacation on an island. <laughs> I just I, I just <laughs> never it, that never I just connect never connected with that. So I do like the baseline that song, but other than that, yeah, and then giving himself. <laughs> and, and, and then one foot out the door, I was like, ah, so but they're, they're good, but not great. Everything on Van Halen, Women and Children First is, is amazing. So that's why I, I t- take this one by a nudge. If uh, Women and Children is a 10, uh, Fair Warning is a 9. That's how close it is. Okay. Um, but Jim, didn't you have didn't you have Fair Warning higher no. on your six-pack? No. no, no, I had a number three. I don't know. Let's check that, Jim. Three, one in the tape. I had, yeah. a, I had a number three, and I had Fair Warning four. Okay, all right. I'm a professional. Uh, 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 I know my Van Halen. I know you do. Um, and I'm going to, for all the same reasons, I'm going for um, for women and children first. I, you know, again, the Cradle Will Rock right right out of the gate was just blew my mind out. And um, all the way down through Lost Control, one of the, the most chaotic, crazy Van Halen songs, ending <laughs> with a simple rhyme. Um, so, yeah, you know, going with women and children first. But what's the real answer Michael, Anthony. wait, wait, what? Right, real guys. quick, Mike, Michael, real quick. So, Don, you're saying you didn't like the baseline and uh, push comes to shove either? <laughs> I, I, you said favorites. you said you're agreeing with me, and at first, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I asked for it. So we're all saying, so we're all saying, women and children, which is crazy because every guitar player I talk to says, "Fair Warning" is the album. <laughs> The brown sound, the tone, this, that, whatever. But well, the three you know, of us fit for women and children. You got what? Mean Streets on there? Yeah. Unchained. So this yeah, is Unchained. love. You know, with the with the exception, I think, of those two, it's women and children for me also. Wow. Yeah, all right. You know, Darker, heavier, heavier record. Women and children is maybe the heaviest Van Halen record. And, and it was. And, you know, when, when Eddie uh, played uh, and the cradle will rock, as much as uh, you know that kind of stuff, Roth was not into Eddie doing any keyboards. Eddie, him, Al, and I jammed at the studio, and he had this. And uh, in fact, I've still got the one that we used to play because I, uh, we, you know, we played on stage. Uh, little Wurlitzer electric piano blowing through his Marshall. You know, people didn't even know it was a piano. A lot of people I didn't, didn't. Even know it was a keyboard. You know, they're all like, "What the hell is that?" And uh, when he first showed that to Alex and myself, and we jammed, I was going, "Oh my god!" And I knew it was like a new, not era, but a new thing, a new twist, you know, a new thing for Van Halen musically. And uh, it was great. Hear about it later, a phenomenal song on Fair Warning, probably my favorite song on that record. But then to me, the counter to that is in a simple rhyme on Women and Children, which is also Uh really great. So um, you can't go wrong with any of them. I make the case, I say it all the time, first four Van Halen records among the greatest run of four records of any band ever in history. It's just ridiculous. Well, thank you very much. But hey what man, you, what, um, about, what about the baseline on Push Comes to uh, Shove? We're gonna let you go. <laughs> you like Michael Anthony's hot sauce, it's phenomenal. Nice. Look for Michael with the circle. We'll talk about that next time. <laughs> Look for Michael with the circle doing some shows. There are a few dates this year, and then as he said, big stuff coming next year. Yeah. It's always great to talk to you, buddy. I'm gonna be in touch with you. I'm gonna try to see you in Vegas, and I thank right you for taking the time. You guys. Yeah, Eddie, come on, come on out to the show, man, next month. We'll All right, man. Thank you so much. Best Thanks, of the Michael. family. Thank you. No, he's amazing, yeah. man. The yeah. best. The best guy. The be- I say it all the time. Him, it's no secret to me that him and Sammy have this relationship because they're the same kind of people. They're just like regular ball busting fun people. They're like from the biggest band in the world, but you'd never know that. Like he's kicking it in a Mickey Mouse shirt, having a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. I know. He's, I know. Like, care in the world. he's the best. He is the best guy. What you see is what you get. And him and him and Sammy, we're gonna do it with Sammy in two weeks. So get ready for round two because uh, Sammy's ready to chop it up with us for sure. So. I'm gonna get some of Sammy's rum for that show in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll I should have the hot sauce. Out. I got some upstairs because he sent me some, but I didn't have it 
I didn't have it handy. All right, well, we got to wrap up. So uh, what an amazing episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, spread the word about That Rocks. Watch it anytime you want. Saw Mike at Downtown Disney Saturday. Well, that's probably the Disney shirt. Yeah. Uh, first time you heard VH, five-year cassette tape, uh, Haskell 420. Wow, that's amazing that you had a chance to see them in 77. That's incredible. Right, and the bootleg tape you heard on there. We need to throw down first six Van Halen versus first six Aerosmith. Wow, that's a good one. Could be good. Like Could be good. Could what are your fa two favorite uh, Van Halen deep cuts? Um, pro the Full Bug is one and probably uh fools if, they, if you could sit out a deep cut i do for sure yeah fools. i just said in a simple rhyme and uh um uh hear about it later on both yeah. of those two records are amazing songs yeah well you know, on fire atomic pongs house of pain i you know it's you could go on and on of course we lost control which i've mentioned now multiple times that's a deep cut that um, you know, sort of flies under the radar, but yeah, there's a million of them. And uh, yeah, come see me wherever I am near you. And uh, check me out. I'll be in um, Columbus, Ohio at the Attic Comedy Club uh, July 15th, and I'll be in Atlantic City July 6th at the Tropicana Casino. And for me, if I can get a flight out of New Jersey tomorrow or in the next couple of days, which I was unsuccessful yesterday, I will be this coming Sunday in Corning, California with Slaughter, Great White, Vixen, and Quiet Riot hosting the 80s Metal Invasion at the Rolling Hills Casino in Corning. Hope to come, you come see me. We get started at 7.30 this Sunday. Everyone's only doing 40 minutes, so quick sets. All the hits should be a fun time in Northern California. Hope to see you Sunday. Everybody have a great 4th of July. Next Wednesday, same time for the live show, 7 Eastern. Guest to be announced. We got a couple options. We're exploring two weeks from tonight. Sammy Hagar and uh, check me out every day on Sirius XM channel 103. Faction Talk live at three o'clock Eastern and, or on the app. And our club members, you want to sign up for the club membership? You could. There's a video on our YouTube. We're going to do an extra 20, 30 minutes of a show right after this in a couple minutes. Club members, come on over. So it's uh, fun over there. So sign up and um, yeah, we take all your questions and just fuck around. It's beautiful. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you.